this week some extra special coalition bargains at our Doyle branch only. Tax rates were 52%, now only 44%. National identity card, nobody should be without one. Cheeky Charlie, wind him up and he won't go. Available at any price you care to offer. And watch out for our super duper promises show. They're 10 a penny at the moment, but remember the price can be renegotiated anytime. And finally this week, our cracking new board game, Leadership Race. Guaranteed to liven up any party. Everyone can play, and there's big prizes for the winner. So come on down to our Doyle branch. Run the country with just six seats. Now that's real value. Leadership crisis continues, and earlier this morning, our reporter was outside government buildings as the ministers arrived. Oh, oh, I have complete confidence in Mr. Hawley. I, I fully expect him to lead the party into the next general election. I am completely satisfied with the Taoiseach, and I can sincerely assure you that Mr. Hawley will stay leader of the party for the foreseeable future. Uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, Mr. Hawley has my full and uh, unwavering support. What leadership crisis? Mr. Hawley is the, the complete confidence of each and every member of the parliamentary party. For Jesus, boss. You're in real trouble. We look at a parliamentary democracy that puts our American system to shame. Tonight, on 60 Minutes. Amidst all the questions being asked about the Clarence Thomas affair and the divisive and viciously confrontational nature of our political system, 60 Minutes went in search of the perfect parliamentary democracy. We think we found it in the far-off little island of Ireland. The Irish are a happy people, and no wonder when you hear of just how well their political system operates. We spoke to the man responsible for Ireland's 40 shades of green, the country's environment secretary, Parig Flynn. Oh yes, we have a marvellous system here. The best in the world, I would say. We have a tremendous leader at the moment, a great father of the nation. We would love to have him with us forever, but of course he and his colleagues understand too well that the time has come when he will hand on the reins of power to a younger man. And you know, it will only take the merest hint to the leader to persuade him that now is the right time. Because you see, here in Ireland, politicians are not interested in power. No, it is service. Service to the state that comes first. At the Irish State Department, Secretary Collins was equally enthusiastic. Uh, our system is uh, denvy of the free world. I've had vast experience abroad, uh, and frankly, it's a mess. Um, everyone talking different languages. Uh, there are lots of free meals, all right, but uh, um, the foreign food plays havoc with my stomach. Uh, they're always going on uh, this old nonsense about apartheid or Zionism, the collapse of communism and so on, but they, they never get close to the real people, to, to, to the voters, like I do in Abbey Field. I mean, when is the last time a politician opened the bar video library and quasar emporium in, in Brussels. Debates in the Irish parliamentary chamber, the Dale, are exemplary in their seriousness, their courtesy, and the way in which no attempt is made to evade the real issues. Uh, and as for these petty, puling little business problems, how dare, how dare the Workers' Party accuse me of any involvement? What are, what are you? But uh, uh, the rump of official IRA? Uh, so I would call on Deputy De Rossa to take that RPG out from under his coat and show his true colour. Everywhere we went in Ireland, we found great love and affection amongst the ordinary folk for their politicians. Whenever we mentioned them, people would laugh gaily and order another round of good old Irish Guinness. Leading Irish feminist politician Mary O'Rourke spoke of this bond. Well, it's great. It's mighty now. It really is. We have these meetings and everyone shouts and cheers and claps us on the back. And people are always ready to offer their opinion to us on how things are going. They'll shout up at me, Go girl, Mary! We're with you all the way. And it's on this basis we decide policy. Careful listening to what the people tell us. It brings a tear to my eye to know how much joy and goodness I'm responsible for by such selfless service to the nation. Yes, indeed. We would do well in America to follow Ireland's lead. As a man in a pub said to me just before we left, you fellas might think you're the land of the free, but we're the land of the freebie. 
Then he laughed loudly and threw back his pint of Guinness in one gulp. And you know something? He looked kind of proud. This is Harry Reasoner in the Emerald Isle for 60 Minutes. Daniel O'Donnell, Gay Byrne, Father Brian Darcy, and Micheline McCormick. If just hearing those names makes you want to throw up, imagine what you'll do if you read their columns every week in the Sunday world. Diarrhea. Are you getting it every Sunday? Mara. Uh, this was this. <coughs> this uh, ad in the Irish Times job seeker column. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Executive with press management skills seeks <clears throat> appointment. Mm -hmm. Pleasant disposition, can take pressure, used to dealing with awkward customers. <clears throat> mm. I wonder who that might be, Mara. No idea, boss. It's you, oh. Mara, thinking the end is nigh. But it's just the wife and kids, boss. I have to earn a crust somehow. Mara, keep this nonsense up and you will be qualified as manager, sewage treatment station rings and understood. And I can give you more, more shit than, than the whole of Dublin. Dublin. I know. And I know how to create a real sting. Yes, boss. Stop blubbering. Here's a copy of another of those programs for national something or other. Dry your tears. Be rational, man. Who do you imagine might be able to challenge me? Well, boss. Um, yes? Well, Albert, I suppose. He has the troops with him. The troops behind Reynolds? Yeah. I think not. Well, he has the officers. Officers? What officers? You call one P. Flintstone an officer? More non-com material, I think you'll agree. Well, there are others with Albert, boss. Who? John Ellis? Mm. Liam Lawler? Good old Lord Lucan? Well, uh, I think not. I have my cohorts, my loyal following, especially young Lochinvar, that prince among thieves, Bertie. What preferment can Albert offer him that I would not? Well, the environment, boss. He's offering him the environment. Oh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Eh? An officer, especially the commanding officer, should never strike a man. Eh? It's uh, just that I've been under a little pressure lately. Mara, you poor child. Come here. Sit on my knee. It's one thing to count the half crowns at the back of the dance hall and deal with gutty showband managers. Uh, quite another to deal with the economy of a nation. But, but he, he he ran a successful pet food business and he made a fortune. Uh, well, uh, Albert's a self-made man like yourself, boss. Self-made man? Yeah. A fortune indeed. No mystery about making a fortune from grinding up knackered horses to keep Rover's coat shiny. Yeah. The punters can see the trick. They can see what's up his sleeve. They can see how he made his fortune. They could never fathom how I made mine. That's why I have an air of mystery, charisma, enigma. I'll make pet food of Albert. New chopped finance minister gets the dogs barking. And now that he has them barking, he has no bite. New pal, or should that be old chum... With added liver, lily liver, and a strong hint of chicken. <laughs> and now, Twin Heads. Our weekly wander down Wicklow Way with a family that plays together and keeps an eye out for meddlesome social workers. Paddy and Rosie happily married father and daughter are finding that Elsie the Sow is putting an emotional strain on their previously blissful marriage. I'm hungry, so I am, Dad. I could eat a farmer's arse through a hedge, so I could. Oh, and if I cut a farmer with his arse through a hedge, I wouldn't be eating it. I never confuse food with romance, so I don't. I'm hungry, Dad. Fair enough, so if you're really that hungry, I could always nip down to Ockham and get a takeaway American-style fried greyhound leg, so I could. And don't forget... I know. Don't, don't answer, answer the, the door, door to, to the, the social, social workers. workers. As Paddy kickstarts his 1937 500cc BSA combination, Rosie cannot bear to look out for fear of having to confront what she knows to be the truth. Yes, Paddy has loaded the sow into the sidecar and is bringing his porcine mistress for a night of passion in their love nest, a corrugated port adjacent to a nearby scrapyard in Belton Glass. Later, Paddy Byrne returns home. Sorry I'm late home, dear. I had to help a few of the lads load some vegetables in the boot of a car. Vegetables in the boot of a car? Yeah, some referees they'd used in a sponsored La Bahami competition below at the Gaelic grounds in Lara. Rosie is jealous and seeks reassurance. Oh, Dad, kiss me. Kiss me. Tell me you love only me. Oh. oh. Dad. Yes, love? You're not seeing anyone else, are you? No, love. Or anything else, love? No, love. Why? 
There's a terrible taste of rashers off your tongue. Next week, Paddy teaches a tourist from Dublin to squeal like a pig. Come here to me, you now. Don't be looking for the guards at all. There's none around here. I'm only trying to be friendly, so I am. It's me nature, so it is. Cardinal Daly, as head of the church in Ireland, have you any comment to make on the recent scandals? Certainly. They're simply savage, sadistic, and insufferable. Oh, I see. Uh, and would you condemn all the businessmen involved in the recent scandals uh, as forcefully as that? Businessmen? No, I spoke simply of the sultans of violence, the sad spectre of terrorism. I see. But what about down south, all the shady dealing we've been hearing about? Of course, I stridently castigate those sellers of condoms, those sybarites of sex who seduce our simple siblings into a spiral of lust. No, I mean the business scandals. Precisely. Sex is a business. Sex is a scandal. In our sad society, we must strive... Yes, we know your views on that, Cardinal. But what does the church have to say about corruption in the business community? Massage parlors, striptease acts, sex for sale on the street, stamp it out, I say. Yes, but surely, Cardinal, wearing little rubber things can't be as bad as defrauding the country of millions of pounds. Have you no comment to make on these events? Sodden sewers of sodomy, sucking our souls into swirling sin, disintegration of society, lust, lust, and it is lust that it is, and it must cease. Uh, yes, well, I think there. you've made your views Scandal. quite clear, Cardinal. Scandal. Thank Scandal. you. Scandal. Okay, lads, you can wheel him away now. Close kissing, sinful dancing, Sunday trading, desegregated schooling. Daniel O'Donnell, Gay Byrne, Father Brian Darcy, and Micheline McCormick. Read their columns every week in the Sunday world. Read them backwards. It's even more stimulating. Read every second word. It's faster that way. They'll make you laugh out loud. And that's just the grammar. Illiteracy. Are you getting it every Sunday? My name is Bruton, John Bruton, private investigator. Financial and political scandals, a specialty. I don't handle divorce work, though. Not since the 1986 constitutional amendment, anyway. It was a quiet afternoon. I was sitting in my office reading Hello! magazine. There was a knock on the door. Hi, Mr. Bruton. My name's Nora. Nora Owen. But you can call me Velma. <laughs> the broad was really something. Eyes as blue as a Fine Gael or shirt and lips as pink as a Labour Party policy. Her legs were longer than a TD summer holidays. I've got a case for you, Mr. Bruton. A real humdinger. It's about a racket run by a guy named Pipeline Charlie. Believe me, Mr. Bruton, this guy's pipeline is full of crap. Suddenly, she was in my arms. If there's one thing that turns me on, it's a potential political scandal. Oh, Jenny, baby. Is that your program for government? Oh. Or are you just glad to see Sorry. me? <laughs> After she'd gone, I had a cold shower. I wondered, was she playing me for a sap? Then I made a couple of calls and went downtown to have a chat with a friendly cop. He gave me the lowdown on Pipeline Charlie. And when I say low down, I mean way down there, as low as it gets. I'm telling you, Mr. Bruton, the guy's a two-bit punk in a three-piece suit. Now, we've been trailing this case for years now. The wise guy bit in arms rap back in 1970, you know what I'm saying? Sounds like a real bad dude. Seems to me like this guy is behind half the rackets in this town. Rackets, schmackets, what can I tell you? Sure he's a bad dude. And as for his no-good son and his helicopter company, well... <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's son sounded like a chip off the old schmuck. I hit the streets, spread a little folding green in the right direction, and pretty soon I was getting a whisper here and a nod and a wink there. I went to see my number one stool pigeon, Fingers Noonan. He pulled up his stool and he said, I'm telling you, there isn't a scandalous pipeline Charlie has been involved in. Locks Distillery, the Kerry Babies, you name it. And he's even convinced Kerry County Council to run a sewage pipe out in his Ficalan. That's old stuff. Anything new? The word is that NCB are to get the contract to privatise the Phoenix Park and sell it off to Disney. They're turning it into a theme park called Paddyland. And then there's the big one, the big fella. You're not saying. I am indeed. T'was Pipeline Charlie who fired the fatal shot that laid Michael Collins low. Oh, fingers. That was 70 years ago. <laughs> Don't be naive, Johnny baby. Don't we all know how careful your man is to distance himself from any scandal he's involved in? I have the evidence. I'm the only one who knows where it is. And it just so happens that it's... In... Fingers. By the time I got to the window, the assassin was disappearing into the distance in a helicopter. The case is at a dead end for the moment. 
I'm sitting here with my glass of Jack Daniels watching the sun sink low over the dizzy skyline of Navan, my city, wondering where it's all going to end, wondering if there's justice to be found down those mean streets, wondering if Pipeline Charity will ever get what's coming to him, wondering above all else if Velma will drop by this evening to take a look at my programme for government. <laughs> Okay, and now with us to review uh, Gareth Fitzgerald's new book is the former Taoiseach and leader of the Fine Gael party, Gareth Fitzgerald. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, is it a good read, did you think? Uh, yes, it's, it's a cracker. It's an absolutely beautiful little book, a stunning book from beginning to end. It's got breath and vision and idealism and, 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 and integrity. Yeah, but isn't the central character of this Taoiseach a bit too, uh, how shall I phrase it? Goody, goody. Um, is it not suspending disbelief, uh, stretching credibility, as it were, defying the natural laws to make him so saintly? No, not at all. I found the central character very true to life. Obviously, in percentage terms, he would be in the top 2% of the population based on the census findings, though not taking into account research done recently in Maynooth College on the presence of saints in Dáil Éireann. But I believe, in broad terms, I would say, yes, I admire this character. I believed in his crusade, uh, and I wanted to have his child, in fact. Did you really? Yeah. Well, best of luck and all that. But surely you felt uh, that lurking under all that goodness was uh, another aspect to the character? Like, for example, perhaps a bumbling idiot who never knew when to shut up? Would that be fair, do you think? Certainly not, Mike. I was terribly moved, actually, reading about how he faced the awesome challenges of high office with dignity, honesty, an extraordinary head for figures, and a supreme capacity for, um, for, um... Uh, Failure. No, certainly not. Self-deception? No. Moral pomposity? Uh, indecision? Cardice? Uh, perhaps incompetence? No, 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 no. Nonetheless, I think we can both agree that Dr. Fitzgerald is a tremendous writer of fiction. Would you say so, Gareth? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Gareth Fitzgerald would be tremendous at anything he put his hands to. Except the Irish economy. Except that, of course. Daniel O'Donnell, Gay Byrne, Father Brian Darcy, and Micheline McCormack. Did you know only one of these four people is a woman? Because they don't. And there are even more shocks in store if you read the Sunday World. We reveal it all, if you know what I mean. Tits, are you getting it every Sunday? Well, it's a big thrill for me to introduce tonight's guest, one of the greatest living Irishmen, Jerry Adams. Well, Jerry Ackley, what have you been up to since we last spoke? Oh, uh, the arm struggle as usual, Bibi. Of course, the <laughs> arm struggle, not just a shin. Now, you have to do one thing for me before we go any further. What's Will that? you look into the camera there and say Chucky Arlo for the viewers? Oh, go away with you now. Go on, Jerry Astor. <laughs> They'd be thrilled. Well, just for you, baby. <laughs> Chucky Arlo. <laughs> Wasn't that only gorgeous? Anyway, Jerry, you must have your hands full these days. What with all these tit for tat killings and bombings and so on? Is it hectic for you? Well, of course, I'm not involved on the ground, so to speak. I come a wee bit long in the tooth for that now, baby. You know? Oh, not at all, <laughs> Jerry, love. Oh. You look fighting fit. Uh, the way it is, baby. Uh, there's a lot of younger lads raring to get out there and kill people. And sure, I just let them at it. You know, it's good experience for them. Oh, Tom Kinchifri Shin. But being a professional patriot these days must be a huge responsibility. Oh, I, I mean, this week alone, there was the responsibility for two bombings, a few shootings and so on. And the apologies, of course, are time-consuming, having to pull the face of sorrow. It's a heavy workload. But, you know, with so much unemployment around, I just thank God I have a job that offers me so much personal satisfaction. Oh, so don't I know. But you must be one of the biggest employers in the North now. It's a boom time for the troubles industry. Now, go to Shinkart. Well, we try to keep it going, you know. And we get no recognition from the occupying government. Or any government, really. Indeed, but what they don't understand is, if we weren't giving all these youngsters employment in the armed struggle, 
They'd probably be hanging around the streets causing vandalism. Oh, indeed. But tell us now, is it difficult to train them? How hard is it to kneecap someone, for example? Ah, you mean lovely knees like yours, baby? Oh, oh stop <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I couldn't be giving away the secrets of the business. And you're I? a good man, I'd say, <laughs> far more at keeping secrets, are you? Oh, well, it's the name of the game, baby. And there's no danger now of you going out of business, would you say? No fear of that, baby. I mean, we have an excellent product. Our particular mix of fear, violence and propaganda has proved fairly irresistible so far. There's a big market, a great demand out there. And we aim to keep it that way. And you've got a pretty good aim by all accounts. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a last word, Jerry, do you have a little message for we Desi Ellis? Who? Huh? Boss. Mm. Ma, ma, boss. Yeah. But where do we stand? Mm. How are we fixed, boss? Boss? Have you, have you done a head count? Uh, <clears throat> steady with that. What are you on about, Mara? Always fuss and bluster. Have you no time to consider the beauty of life and uh, <coughs> the passing of the seasons? Yeah, but the thing is, boss, you see... Consider you the lilies of the field. Yeah, consider that who are us, do- boss. PJ. No, no, no. You fret so. No. Come, come look at the leaves on the trees. No See them turn. Come on, don't it sit up on my knee here. Autumn, Mara. No, no, Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't spell that. Hear the rustling of the leaves. Hear the sharpening of the noise, boss. <laughs> oh, no. Knives being sharpened, Mara. It's all the stress is getting to you. <gasps> At last, my people have accepted me. Here I am, a statesman, beloved by his party and people. Uh, and now that this parochial factionalism is finished, I can turn to the Anglo Irish summit. Time to stride again the great stage of world events. Perhaps now I, uh, I should take that trip to Camp David. I don't want to keep bush waiting any longer. Don't wish to offend them. Yeah, boss, there are murmurings, boss. Of course there are murmurings. Of approval. I have delivered the program for government. Well, now, boss, you have to give Bertie some credit. Ah, I mean, he, Bertie, 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 Bertie. Yeah. Bertie. Yeah, yeah. Great little gorier, oh, Bertie. Yeah. Salt of the earth. Ah, yes. Reminds you of myself, yeah. not, you know, before I made my first million. Well, of course. Part of the roll is Aye. young Bertie, Aye. smashing Aye. kid. Aye. One day, Mara, yeah. one day, yeah. I know, it's hard to believe, but no. you mark my words. I miss it. Young yeah. Bertie will sit mm. where now I sit. Mm. I'm telling you first, Mara, I'm going to see he is my successor. Yeah, but boss, he, he says... Not he, so much, Tony. Sorry, he, he said... Uh, there you go. He says he needs more experience. Oh, boss. he'll have plenty of experience by then, Yeah, man. but boss, Tempest Fugit, are you sure Bertie will be ready in the time that's left? For God's sake, Mara, he'll be a great tea shop. Oh, Don't no. fret, he'll be only 60. 60? Well, 65, whatever. And it was at this stage, Miles, uh, that the dog bit the guard on the penis. Thanks, Tomas. And I believe in the chamber room next door there was yet another instalment in the long-running Dublin eviction saga. Yes, Miles. uh, Well, what happened today is yet another turn in events which basically go back 12 years. Uh, The tenant is a a Mr. Charles J. Hawhey, a rather battered-looking old man whose eviction is now being sought by public authorities. Do we know anything about this man, Tomas? Actually, we do, Miles. Mr. Hockey, it emerged, despite his crumpled looks and a particularly worn nose, is not, uh, as it first appeared, a, a wino at all. So uh, appearances can be deceptive. Um, the old man first moved into an office in Dublin, too, in, in the Marion Street area, to be precise, 12 years ago, um, in late 1979. And despite occasional trips out of it, he's basically squatted in, in the same office for that period. And what is at the heart of this dispute, to Paul? Well, Miles, it appears that the old man was under the impression that the lease to the office was at least 99 years. And, in fact, he had proffered his own opinion that he was uh, entitled to freehold title of yeah, the does office. the man have a criminal record no he, he doesn't miles he has a bad record but not it would seem uh, a criminal one certainly not at this stage he was acquitted of arms charges in 1970 but since then has kept his nose clean though um, an architect's report points out that the nose has fallen into disrepair 
However, it was noted that many of his, his friends could well find themselves a subject of investigation. So he is an unfortunate man in many ways. In many ways. He has fallen uh, off horses in his time and, and what have you. But in the main, he has lived, it would appear, in a rather eccentric and opulent style and was noted um, for his generosity and high spending habits. And so he's now broke. No, Miles, no. Uh, this this is the interesting thing about the case. Uh, he's not broke at all. In, in fact, it wasn't his money he spent. It, it was always public money. Will they get him out, do you think? I'll know when it's time to go. Oh, okay. is that the time? No. Order, gentlemen, please, order. I am the chairman here. We know who these traitors are. Dermot Morgan, Holly McGlynn, Owen Rowe, and this whole Scott the Leadership motion has been put down by Dermot Morgan and Jared Stemmers with Gene Kerrigan throwing in his disgraceful Tuppence Hedley work. This whole thing has been engineered by Lucky Butler. And we know where the direction is coming from. This has been directed by Gerard Stembridge. Recorded at Real Good Studios Dublin, Scrap Saturday is from Q Productions for RTU. Merciful, my feet. killing me.